gift economy different than bartering? Do you want to give the answer or should I? Mm. So that's exactly it. So in a gift economy, it's a you do me a favor now, I'll do you a favor later on. It involves a lot of trust in order to have a gift economy work. And you, it may come to pass that you never need that other person's service, and so you never really get paid back for your service. A bartering economy is, I will do you a favor now, but you must give me something that I value in exchange. So it might, it might not be something universal like money, but it could be, for example, you barter car services for a handful of seashells. Or something to that effect where in the intrinsic value of what's being bartered is very individualized so that then brings us to the next question what are the six universal qualities of money yep so widely accepted no matter where you go um, money is shaped the same way uniform yep So money has they to. They have a limited amount. It's of in worth. it's in limited supply, which means that the prices stay relatively fixed. Mm -hmm. A little help. Mm -hmm. Can you can you uh, carry a big boulder with you and use that as money? All right, money is you can move it around easily. So it has to be something that's portable. Um, can you use can you use a wet paper bag as money? So it has to be something that's durable, so it, it kind of stays the same um, in terms of not getting worn down or broken apart. Except when you need to make change for your paper bag. Can you make change for your paper bag? Can you make change for a paper bag? If you make change and rip it in half, can you still use that paper bag? No. no. So that's why you can't use paper bag as money because it has to be divisible. Meaning that if I give you one paper bag's worth of stuff, you've got to be able to give me some change for whatever happens to be left over. So in other words, that's why you have cents and dollars with the money that we have. Um, so that the six qualities of money, it needs to be durable, portable, divisible, uniform, in limited supply, and widely accepted. So now, that brings us to the next question. Why is money better than bartering or a gift account? So in other words, what you're saying is that no matter wh where you give the money, the money will be worth the same yeah. at all the locations. Yeah. And then also, it's trusted by the people who are um, who are using it. And then also, unlike a gift economy, the money is paid up front. So there's no outstanding debts left over, or at least there shouldn't be. So then, that brings us to the last question. What is purchasing power? Purchasing power is... Um... It is. So it's your ability to buy things. So purchasing power represents the um, amount of goods or services you can purchase for some amount of money. Very good. Very, very good. All right. So let's move to the adult section here. So we talked a little bit about the broad, so essentially corporate finance. There's a couple of broad objectives that a responsible corporation is going to try and put forth. Um, or the or you know the, the managers or the directors are going to put forth. Um, what are two broad objectives that a responsible corporation will uh, do with respect to finances? And that can be for anybody here who wants to chime in, or I can chime in. I don't mind chiming in. So technically, a corporation its goal or its number one to reach the firm's long term goals, whatever that may be, whether it be to bring a product to market, whether it to be well, some of them have, you know, 
ethical goals and concerns and they put that in front of their product and the product is just a means to the end. But then the second thing that they have to do in order to be long standing is they have to stay competitive in the market. So the two things that a responsible uh, corporation should be doing is with managing the funds is trying to reach the firm's stated long-term goals and staying competitive in the market. Um, second question, how is a company profit different than company wealth value? So profit is only a subset of the wealth value. It is only one part of the wealth value. Profit is essentially the money that the corporation makes on top of the overhead deducted. But wealth value also includes other things. So it includes the quality of the product made, the branding of the product, the market share on the market, um, the research and development, and it also represents the culture of the company. What's the difference between a shareholder and a stakeholder? Shareholders have uh, direct financial uh, investment, whereas uh, stakeholders are not just those are financial investment, but they're also the employees of the company. Yes, uh, and not just the employees of the company, but it can also be with the stakeholders, anybody who's affected by the finances of the company. So okay. customers also, suppliers, creditors, community, and the environment. But you're correct, the shareholders are ones who own a portion of the value of the company. Um, that becomes a very important distinction, especially when we talk about even things like school boards. What is a stakeholder? When they when they say we want to bring key stakeholders for superintendent search, they and then we noticed when they had their little meetings, who did they bring in? They brought in people from the uh, various PACs, like the Chinese, the Chinese PAC, for example, for the immersion program. They brought in folk. They brought in students from various student groups. They brought in various faculty from faculty groups. But and where it gets interesting there is you can start dissecting. Okay, well, does the common taxpayer count as that too? Because the common taxpayer didn't really quite get a say, or did they? They got a say more indirectly with that um, survey that was put out. Um, as opposed to shareholders, and in this case, shareholders are the ones who actually bought money into the system. And when you take a look at a school board, technically the shareholder is anybody who's putting up money for bonds and or propping up the system by paying taxes. So we all here in this room are shareholders for a public school district. Whether we're stakeholders depends on whether or not we're actually impacted by their policies and their economic policies, which technically with the bonds, we are also stakeholders as well. Well, and you could, you know, the, you know in, in theory, the product of a school is the education of the child. So, you know, the, the better the education of the child, the that has a direct impact on the societal, the, the society within the community. So, every person that lives within the community could arguably be a stakeholder because they are directly impacted by the quality of product that the school district is producing. Correct. And the product is the child. As the, the Correct. Of the child. Yeah. So when we put it in terms like that, then the corporation, you can superimpose the organization of the corporate structure onto the school itself in the manner that you mentioned. Okay, so which forms of business have legal status? When we talk about forms of business, we talk about things like sole proprietor, partnership, of which partnership also includes LLC, and then corporations. So which one has legal status? LLCs and corporations. That's correct, that's correct. And with the LLCs, it's a limited legal status, but it's a legal status nonetheless. LLC is that weird little bridge between partnership and corporation, because it has aspects of both. Yeah. Limited partnership, oh, let's see what I put it here. Oh, that's right. The implication of this means that the company and the owners are separate from each other. When there's legal status, the company can be sued, but the owners who are the shareholders cannot be sued. What's one difference between an LLC and a corporation? So that's where we're gonna get granular. Uh, there's a certain dollar amount right, and, uh, No, it's just level of incorporation. Uh, LLCs are typically uh, either sole proprietorships or individual liability corporation. Uh, corporations have significantly more structure than you have a board or directors. They usually have presidents. Uh, well, so the LLC. 
actually have a more robust legal stature. And I have an LLC. <laughs> so, an LLC. So do is, you. <laughs> yeah. So an LLC is owned uh, by one or more individuals and a corporation is owned by the shareholders. Correct. So this makes the corporations more suitable if you plan to seek outside investments like investments from the public. So when you superimpose the school onto that, the public school, the, sp uh, the public school behaves more like a corporation than it does an LLC. Um, also corporations are managed by a board of directors and usually those board of directors are not necessarily shareholders. And we see that in the case of, let me see here, I know technically all of them live in the district, don't they, from our Board of uh, Education. So I guess they would all be shareholders as well. But that doesn't have to be the case. Um, and also, corporations, unlike LLCs, can only be terminated by legal winding up process. So there's actual legal legalities that go into it. Whereas if a any partner goes dead, um, decides to leave, or goes insane, the LLC is basically dissolved. Isn't that only on... Uh proprietorships and partnerships, but not necessarily on LLCs. I think on an LLC, you can give like the full rights to survivor if there's multiple owners listed. I think you can too. I will look that up. I will look that up. Um, admittedly, that's not what I had here, but I will look that up. And, and I, I could be wrong too, I'm not <laughs> but you are correct. And there are many forms of corporation. There's, um, it's not just the standard corporation that you think of like DM or whatever. There's also, um, Subchapter S corporations. I was going to talk about that okay. next too. No, no, by all means. No, no, no. Because no, I have only basic information regarding and, an S corp. And because I, I was basically involved, I, I invested in an S corp, and all of the money passes through to the investors as individual W's, tax W's, your individual tax rates. So it's similar to like a trust where the trust money gets passed through to the beneficiaries, and they pay. Last but not least, if you want to transfer ownership, it's much easier to do so in a corporation. All you have to do is basically sell your shares yep. as opposed to um, all of the legal uh, winding up that you would have to do um, with um, with partnership or um, with, um, sorry, not legal, uh, with, with partnership or with sole proprietorship because you can't really transfer ownership. You have to dissolve the partnership or the sole proprietorship and then rebuild it again um, if you want to um, transfer ownership. Technically, it's not even transferring ownership. It's it terminating is, the business. It is more difficult with a with a S corp because because of how it's structured. It's basically, it's a pass through corporation. Yes, that's what they were saying yeah. on this um, on the information that I found. So the question came up: What is the difference between an S corp and an LLC? So an LLC and an S corp basically share multiple characteristics. They're both considered to be pass through entities, meaning they don't pay corporate taxes. Right but they still offer the liability protection for their owners and principals on a limited basis, Correct. like a corporation would. So it's kind of that hybrid between a partnership and a corporation. The difference between an S Corp and an LLC that I've, found, that I've come to find out is that LLC owners, they have specific tax benefits that they can claim under the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Um, S Corp owners do that too. However, let's see here. Unlike S Corps, LLCs aren't subject to IRS regulations concerning the number and type of shareholders. So there's much more stringent requirements for the number of shareholders and the type of shareholders for an S Corp. Um, in addition, it says, let's see here, the LLC is also able to allocate profit and losses in whatever proportion the owners desire as opposed to set proportions by the IRS regulations. Um, that's what I have here, but I would absolutely take, like I said, I'm, I'm a tyro when it comes to this, so I would absolutely, I absolutely take more information regarding escorts from you two as well, or V3. Well, it, yeah, it, I mean, it's basically the profits of an escort is passed through um, to the individual shareholders. Uh, it is a little more difficult than selling your shares to DM to sell your shares to yourself, to sell your shares back. And there is a limit on the number of shareholders on the public that. Okay, so with that in mind, I was gonna start on the uh, kids session. I wanna keep things on time for everybody. I wanna make sure I don't get everybody out late. So we're actually gonna truncate it a little bit. Today we'll take on, um, we're gonna take on both um, let's see here, financial exchanges as well as um, 
financial institutions. And we'll just leave it there for the kids program. And then we'll go to agency for the adults um, section. So without further ado, I'm gonna sit over here. Let's see here, financial literacy, types of financial exchange. Let's see. No, con oh, no connection to the internet. Uh, get one second here. I will be right back.